So next up, let's talk about working stabilized and using visualizations to make your tracking better. The beauty of all of these methods is they all allow you to view your track data stabilized. And it's a lot easier to view stabilized footage and stabilized track data than it is to try and watch it in context. So an example of this, so we have our patch here that we worked on earlier. You can see it here. Another way to approach this shot, especially from a visualization standpoint and making sure that your tracks are actually what you want them to be, is to apply the inverse track to your footage and then just merge your patch over before you've applied the match move data to it. So the end result is actually the same in terms of the pixels, it's just the relationship of the tracker. So in this case, now we can zoom in and we can really analyze this up close and see how it's working stabilized. So you can see we have a little bit of drift, which I think is expected. These trees are a little bit closer to camera. But you can see we also have a little bit of rotational wiggle here. So this might be one of the things where we might take one more pass with our tracker and add a second point and help stabilize for rotation and just make it a little cleaner. The other thing you can do is you could add, say you had a little bit of slow drift or a little bit of a per, uh, perspective shift, you could actually add a corner pin or some other translation tool in line and then manipulate it a tiny bit. We'll add a little transform here just to make it easy. But say, yeah, say you have some roto, something else, you could actually set this We'll go to one end. Say we want it to start here. We'll set a key. And we need to compensate for some drift. So we'll put it there. And then we set a second key. So now you've, you've created a very slight animation, but only on a handful of keyframes to compensate for where maybe the track was drifting or you're, you know, and this works across the board with 3D tracks, with vector tracks and being able to view it stabilized gives you the tools to actually see that and work on it efficiently. So now we can actually connect this back in line and if we view this here, you can see we have a, maybe a little bit cleaner track right there or maybe it works a little better or we've corrected some error that we just, we could have spent another day tracking it or we could have just made a subtle adjustment on the actual patch itself. So that's the way to use visualization with 2D tracking. And we already talked about inverse ST maps with the vector tracking, but let's see how that actually looks in a real comp. So here's the same thing. We've, we've matched our patch on our reference frame. Now we're outputting our source in stabilized space, and then we're just merging over our patch before we apply the ST map or vector distort to it. And again, this lets us see really where it's working and where it's not. So you can see down here, we've got a little bit of breathing, a little bit of animation here. That might hide in the track when you're playing it in real, in context. Or it might be something where you need to add a little corner pin or animate your corner pin or add a secondary warp, a spline warp or a grid warp to just make some slight modifications to make that stick a little bit better. You know, same here. You can see we've got a little bit of wobble. Now this could also be a vector thing. You might need to actually increase your vector detail to make this stick a little better. Or maybe modify your denoise, something, you know, something a little further up the line to make this work a little bit better. And same here, you can see where we're starting to get a little bit of mushiness and this starts to get weird. But that's how you would visualize an ST, your vector-based warp. And then you can view it moving and see how that's working for you. This is where it gets a little more interesting and a little bit more complicated. When you move into 3D tracking and how to stabilize and how to visualize 3D tracking, it's a little more complex and you really have to think about it a certain way. We're also introducing the concept of projection in for this. So say we have our scene that we showed earlier with our two cards tracked in to the countryside. And you can see they're sticking reasonably well. And we don't have any motion blur turned on or depth. You know, there's no blur depth of field applied here either. The way you would actually visualize if these are working 
is you duplicate your cards. So you duplicate these two cards, which we've duplicated over here. And then you'd use a Project 3D. Project 3D takes your source image and a camera and it projects that image through that camera to that geo. A Project 3D is actually a shader in traditional terms. And then we can also use our point cloud that we've generated previously to help us place our cards and help us with our visualization as well. So if we view this, and I'll turn off our point cloud so we can see our cards here. So now we're actually projecting that image and it's landing on that card. If we rotate around, it makes a little more sense. So if we hit play, You can see we have moving image in that card. So you can see it here stabilized, which can be useful, but you can also output this. So that's a little easier to work on, or if you need to make 2D modifications to that image, you can do it that way. So we'll use our scan line render. This time we'll only hook up an object in a scene and we'll change our projection mode to UV. So this is just taking the extents of this card and outputting that to our format. So if we hit tab, so this is our UV output of that one card. This is a really good way to see if your 3D tracks are working. And it's also a really good way to work on top of this to make slight warps and modifications so that you don't have to spend another day trying to retrack something. Sometimes you just need a little bit of 2D love and it'll make the whole thing stick the way you expect it to. So we have our two different cards here. So here's our mountain. And you can see that start to get pretty murky and muddy. And if we look at our scene, it's because we're really far away and it's a really small image relative to our main or original source. But again, it's a really great way to see how well that's sticking. And you can see we have a little bit of up and down wobble here. You can also combine trackers. This might be this kind of thing where you either animate a 2D transform or you use the tracker node and do a 2D track on this image and then apply that to your patch. And it's amazing how well that can actually make something really stick. And really that's all this is about. It's about making it stick. You know, if your tracks don't stick, you're then gonna spend a ton of time trying to figure them out or retrack them or make them work or counter animate, you know, using other tools to try and fix what you should have correct before you go down the path of compositing pieces in with tracking tools. All right, and that wraps up tracking.